Hi, I'm still working on uh, the video part two of the unpredictability of fuses. I'll link in part one if you haven't seen it down below. It's very, very interesting. I've set up a little uh, thing here. I've just modified the meter so that I can uh, test the new um, uh, 630 milliamp fuses that are in the BM225 uh, multimeter as opposed to the old 400 uh, milliamp fuses I did in the previous video. Anyway, I did some testing and I was getting rather confusing results that didn't quite match the data sheet. And then I realized that I had an old data sheet. So I asked them for a new data sheet and there's actually significant differences in the data sheet. They don't actually have the 630 milliamp one here. So I uh, specifically asked them for the 630 milliamp uh, data sheet and I got that. But what they sent me is the latest data sheet um, which is exactly the same fuse. Nothing's changed. It's the HV620 uh, series, but take a look at these graphs. These have changed. Yes, they have actually added an extra decade uh, here down below, but if you chop that off, um, which is basically what they've done here, and they've added an extra decade here, so they've just sort of like zoomed in a little bit, but you can see that these characteristics have changed actually change these characteristic curves. Take for example the 500 and 600 milliamp uh, fuse characteristic curves, you'll see that they actually cross over down here. The characteristics actually cross over, but over here 500 and 600 milliamps they haven't crossed over. And likewise for the 2 amp and 1.6 here, you can see that they don't cross over until right down here, but 2 amps and 1.6, they cross over right up here. So these are different characteristic curves um, for exactly the same model fuse, just, you know, like four years apart. I think this is 2020, this is 2024. No surprise, really, because uh, manufacturers of fuses are constantly tweaking uh, their metallurgy, constantly tweaking their secret source, because every fuse manufacturer has their own secret source of materials that go into manufacturing the fuse wire, and, and not just the materials, but also how they anneal them or whatever they do at the, you know, mechanical level to physically manufacture the wires. So they all have their own secret source and they're always, I guess, constantly refining their characteristic curves, whether it slopes like this, whether it slopes like that. By the way, if you have it, more, the more vertical it gets, the more unpredictability you get. You want to sort of uh, make them like that. So I don't know, maybe they've changed, you know. Anyway, they have tweaked their processes and they can use a ton of different materials to do these things like uh, tin, lead, copper, uh, silver, nickel, zinc, uh, chromium, aluminium, magnesium, all these types of different materials, they can blend these together to produce different types of fuses and how they react. So, and not to mention the physical, as I said, the physical manufacturing of them. So sometime in this last four years, they've actually changed the materials in here. So this got me to thinking something that I read about like I don't know, donkey's years ago, way back. I think it was in Electronics Australia. I'm not sure if anyone knows, leave it in the comments down below. I read about how you can actually change the characteristics of fuses by thermally shocking, like permanently change the characteristics by thermally shocking them. And I thought I'd actually test that here, considering I've got the setup all ready to go. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to thermally shock some of these fuses and see if we can get it to permanently change their characteristics. See if we can measure any difference. It's going to be interesting. Let's go. So this is the characteristic for the 630 milliamp fuse we've got. I'm going to pick a time that's like, you know, if we can get it to like break in 10 seconds or something like that, because I don't want this video to go on forever. But these are just nominal curves. They're not guarantees. Uh, you don't know what the actual um, physical spread on these is. So I'll just experiment a bit, pick a nice value. Okay, 1.5 amps, here we go. Boom. And, oh, 1.8 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Oops. And we can also measure the uh, resistance uh, of the fuse here. I'm not doing uh, four-wire compensation or anything, but that's going to be good enough for Australia. That just It gives us a ballpark to see if thermally shocking these fuses changes their uh, re resistance at all, um, because it's all a relative measurement anyway. All right, let's try 1.45 amps. Boom. Oh, oh, that one blew straight away. Bugger. Well, that's the unpredictability of fuses for you. Let's try 1.45 amps again, shall we? There you go, that one's lasting a bit better. Yeah, that other one was just an outlier. So, 1.15 volts. 
Well, that was 21 seconds. So, yeah, I reckon that's all right. Somewhere in there, um, <laughs> that we've probably got the two extreme ends of the uh, curve there. So what I've got here is three uh, random fuses out of my uh, batch here, or the 630 milliamp jobbies. And uh, I put a red mark on them just so I don't get them mixed up. And we'll go whack these in the freezer. Oh, all right. I've gone for four wire resistance measurement here. So I've got the extra sense wires uh, connected directly across here like this. If you want to see the board, it's just the one. 121 GW multimeter and I've just bridged the fuse over there so the fuse is basically between the amps and milliamps uh, jack there um, there's nothing else in circuit that residual resistance there is just the uh, power supply and the uh, timer which are in parallel here so let's measure five fuses 0 0.49.5 49 0.495 so they're all fairly consistent aren't they but this is just the cold DC resistance, of course. The fuse wire, uh, the fuse wire heats up. What our ballpark is now. Let's go get the ones out of the freezer and see what they're like. So I've had the fuses sitting in my little lab freezer here. You can see them down there. Yes, I've got a couple of ice blocks there. And let's measure the temperature of this. Should be about minus 15 or something like that. Yep, yep, you can just see the outline in there, so they've gotten to the temperature of the freezer. Minus 15, minus 17, whatever. Anyway, we've thermally shocked those, shocked those little suckers. Let's test them. Don't know if you can see that, but they're a little bit frosty. Um, but yeah, like they don't have to stay cold like that, but uh, yeah, they're still at... Anyway, you can see that the minimum, 8 degrees there, so they've, they've come back pretty quick. So it doesn't matter whether we test them frozen or not, we're uh, testing whether or not We've physically, uh, permanently changed the alloy in there. Bloody lights. All right, let's just get a control fuse in there. 0.487, you know, they're all around about that uh, figure there. There's another one, 0.476. Now let's get one of the frozen ones here and let's actually put that in there. And look, not, not 0.384 ohms. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. And I'm thermally like warming those up. Those aren't really cold anymore. So it's not just the, re oh, <laughs> my permanent marker's rubbing off. It's not like just a regular thermal response of these things. Um, It's like seriously, um, 0.385, same. What the heck? Last one here, see if that's exactly the same. And 0.387, they're all exactly the same. What the heck? And as I said, we're not just talking about the regular thermal response here. The actual rating of the fuse is a nominal one at, uh, an, an, you know, regular ambient of 20 degrees C. So it will actually scale based on that. But these are back at room temperature now, but they've seemed to have permanently lowered their resistance. And if they lower their resistance, I assume that's going to change the, uh, the like the melting point of this thing. There's something that's happened to the metallurgy in here by freezing it. Um, that's permanently changed that. So that should, I think, anyway, we'll test it now, translate into a actual uh, breakage current. Let's try it. Okay, frozen fuse, well, no longer frozen, but went through a thermal cycle. Let's whack it in there and let's time it at the same 1.45 amps uh, constant current that we had before. So let's do that. Where, where at a volt? Was it, what was it, 1.3? Volts before, that's what you'd expect with a lower, um, a lower effective resistance of the fuse. And it's, is, is that going up? Is that heating up? It's not. Now, based, I've been doing fuse testing for the last day or two, um, mucking around with them, trying to get uh, various results. And I know that I've had some of them running uh, like overnight at like uh, previously, um, I was running these overnight at like 1.1 amps, I think it was, and it didn't break at all. And they, from memory, I think were around about a volt. So there you go. I, I don't think that is going to break at all. It's just not near the breaking uh, voltage, which of course, you know, V squared on R is going to heat up internally and then the metallurgy of the uh, fuse inside uh, breaks it. But one volt is not going to, I'm pretty confident I could leave this for hours and that is not going to break. That is permanently changed. We'll try a, another one here. Let's whack that in and yeah, reset. Boo Whoa. Whoa, that's 0.676. What the heck? That is super low. Wow, we're getting one volt on the other one. Uh, <laughs> seems to be some variability. This one is definitely, 
never gonna blow. And we'll get the third one. Let's whack that in. 0.68. Oh, what was wrong with that first one then? I think that was the first one that I had. So let's whack that back in and try it again. No, 0.9. Okay. So there is a significant, yeah, that one's, oh, okay. So one out of three, but still that is like, that, that's never gonna blow at 1.45 amps. We're gonna have to go higher. Gonna put one of those lower reading uh, ones back in and I'm gonna adjust the current 1.65 amps. That would definitely instantly blow any of the uh, traditional uh, ones. So let's give that a go. No, 0.8, nah. Nah, that is never gonna blow. That is never gonna blow. We have permanently changed that. Wow. All right, I'm going for broke. Two amps. Let's see if we can blow it at two amps. Or, yeah, we might. We might get it to blow at two amps. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Blow. We, we won't see the magic smoke escape. But yeah, this is a 630 milliamp fuse. The other ones have a snowball's chance in hell of surviving. Uh, two amps that last for like a millisecond before they blow and this one is doing holding two amps no problems whatsoever wow oh she she just blew at 53 seconds there 53 seconds at two amps <laughs> that's incredible and just as one last experiment, I'll get a brand new E from the box, um, unfrozen, so no thermal shocking. One point, and let's wind it back to 1.6, because two is just going to blow so instantly. This one probably only will last a second or something. So let's go. Yep. Uh, oh, I didn't reset that properly. But yeah, you saw it there. It, it just blew straight away. There you have it. That is amazing. Other brands, other models, uh, like all bets are off. Leave it in the comments down below if you want to experiment with this. But freezing fuses like that can permanently alter the current. You know, if you've got like a one amp fuse in stock, but you need like a two amp jobby, well, you might just be able to just freeze the thing and then um, it permanently changes the alloy in there somehow. Sorry, I'm not a metallurgist. I've got no idea. Any metallurgists in the comments, please leave it in the comments down below how you think this is happening. But unfortunately, we don't know the secret source that they're using in those fume wire, fuse wires. But there you go. Um, so that old thing I heard about, about freezing fuses, thermally shocking them. Um, I don't know if you can thermally shock them the other way. Uh, heat them up. I don't know if you want to try that. <laughs> leave your results down in the comments down below but freezing those fuses and shocking them can change the characteristic curve even move it like this I don't know if the slope still stays the same of course you would have to extensively test this it's a huge amount of uh, time and effort and expense to actually uh, get these curves but uh, whether or not it changes uh, the slope like that or whether you know it's but it's obviously at least shifted it up like that like per and it seems permanently because these were back at room temperature so there you go, a fascinating effect. If you know, I don't know if there's a name for this kind of effect. If there is, I don't know. I, I hereby name it the Jones effect for fuses. Um, if there isn't an existing name, handy little tip. Next time you're in a dire need, because I don't recommend this as a uh, like a proper technique, but if you're in a pinch next time, maybe you can uh, chuck your fuses in the uh, freezer and um, get a higher current rating out of them. Who knew? Unbelievable. Anyway, um, might do. Leave it in the comments down below if you want me to do more experiments on this, but that is a fascinating insight, is it not? Anyway, if you liked that video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. Hello.